Hey, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Wonder Snatch. Today is another Get Ready With Me. I'm getting ready for my film screening, my AFA Fun For The Arts film screening. And I thought I might as well do a Drag Race Roundup and a couple of reviews of local drag shows. I went to watch a couple of drag shows last week. Um, the Premature Commotion, hosted by Becca the Bus, and the Boom Boom Room Live, okay, at Marina Bay Sands, big fancy hotel in Singapore. And if you want to see what I thought about it, stay tuned, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications, all right? Okay, I'll see you in a bit. All right, okay, I'm back. Let's just get right into this, all right? Um, shut off. I don't have much time. My sister's coming to help me vlog the event later, so... Um, I gotta get ready. So yeah, check out the vlog also. I think it's gonna be my next video or maybe I already posted it. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go for a very editorial eye. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm being inspired by Crystal Versace who won Drag Race UK, okay? She had this, during the finale, she had this very nice editorial black line all the way across and no brows, but I think I'm gonna do brows today. So I'm just gonna do the top half of my face first because I'm gonna use a lot of black eyeshadow and I don't want to do, have a lot of fallout. So I'm just gonna do the top there first. Okay, and I'm also trying this new sweat block towelettes that I found on Amazon to see if that makes a difference because my nose is a little bit sweaty. I bought some new Makeup Forevers. I'm going to try Cool Tone Makeup Forever this time. It's R330. I really like the coverage of this because the other one's a little bit yellow for me. Yeah, and that's much cooler. All right, so Drag Race UK, we have a winner, Crystal Versace. I'm actually quite happy Crystal won. She was flawless throughout the competition, okay? And I think Rue was enamored with her from day one, okay? <laughs> Apparently, she even took Crystal aside um, and told her that she was amazing, that her dancing was amazing and everything. So there wasn't any way that she would not have won. Hmm, yeah. That's not a bit fishy, this makeup forever. <laughs> okay, and I bought some contour. So this is R530. Okay, yeah, but, and the other two contestants, I think, did not really stand much of a chance. I love the day was too green, okay? Apparently she just started drag like two years ago and you can tell, okay, her outfits were really, really not the best. Okay, she looked the worst on the runway. She had, her dress didn't hit the floor. It was a little bit misshapen. Her makeup was terrible, almost nothing, okay? And this wig was really, really strange. It looked like a pile of leaves or something, okay? And the hairline was weird. The hairline was went all the way across and the hair just went straight up and it just looked off. It just looked wrong, okay? I really think um, she probably sealed the fate. Although she won four challenges, I think that really sealed the fate that she was not going to win Drag Race UK. And Kitty Scott Claus, although she's a great workhorse queen, she's a comedy queen, she has a lot of experience, she's a little bit indistinguishable from the past two winners, right? These like... Um, Grand Dam kind of comedy queens, the Vivian and Lawrence Cheney. And Rue really likes these skinny fashion twinks. And I think they she really wanted um UK to have one of them, like you know, in the in the vein of Violet Chachki. And since Bimini Bonbulash didn't win last time, I think it was a shoe-in for Crystal Versace to win this time. And I'm very happy to see Crystal Versace. I mean she's really young. She's only 19. And I think the World of Wonder is really clever to get her in while they're young because I think she's going to go on and do really amazing things. I mean, it's a bit of a risk, okay? She could go on and become like a Violet Chachki, do really amazing stuff for the rest of her career and it'll all be tied to drag the Drag Race brand. Or she could quit drag, <laughs> go to school or something, yeah. That's probably a wise move on their part. Okay, yeah, so Drag Race UK was unfortunately marred by a whole bunch of very unfortunate eliminations. And you know, a lot a lot of it was probably a bit left a lousy taste in the mouth. First off was Victoria Scone, who was who had a knee injury. And then um Charity Case was doing really well. Okay, her, her looks were really good, but she I think there was some sort of drama behind the scenes. Apparently she um was overheard by RuPaul um, you know, saying some bad things about the show, so she was eliminated for that. And then of course Theresa May and River Medway with a unfortunate double elimination. And there were so many double saves and everything. It was really a messy, messy season. 
And I, I think another thing is that this season had really a lot of very new queens, okay? All of them, I think, I love the is the oldest at 33 or 34 or something like that. There's, there, there isn't like a lot of very old, very established drag here. I think Rue was trying to capture some sort of young energy in this in this group, but they were quite um, inexperienced. And a lot of breastplates. You know, every single person is wearing breastplate, breastplate. And the finale, all of them wearing breastplates. And you know, after a while, it's just a bit too much. Priming the eyes with my Anastasia. I'm going all the way around. I'm going to go for a black and whitish thing. So I'm going to try this notepad palette from Crayon Case. Um, neutrals and blacks and everything. So I'm going to try to do that. First, I'm going to go in with a fluffy brush. Okay, I'm going to get, use this transition shade and just set up here. Use a flat brush going straight in with this gray, this blackish gray. Okay, I'm just going to sketch out my crease. going for this crease today. I'm going to use the same black. Let's blend this up here. Okay, yeah. So that's Drag Race UK. Um, apparently they're casting for season 4 already. I, I, I hope season 4 is much better than this one. I've been finding all the Drag Race, as I said, a little bit of a chore recently. Drag Race Canada isn't much better. After the Asian Queens were all Eliminated, it got a little bit boring. So blend it upwards there, and then I'm going to blend it downwards here. I think for Drag Race Canada, the last episode really left a really bad taste in my mouth. Okay, Kamora Amor, the only black queen that's left, I think she was looking around and she really realized that she was out of her depth. Okay, her makeup was really not up to par compared to everyone else. Okay, she had really poor makeup skills. I mean, you could see from the last look, her eyelashes were basically pointing downwards. Um, even getting ready, her face is always a little bit messy. And so she kind of like threw that final lip sync by being a complete jerk on stage. I mean, she was like following geometric all around, trying to distract her and made it really uncomfortable. I think it was not, not very pleasant to watch. Yeah, and also, <laughs> I don't know whether you know this, but Ameta Bruegel's judging wig, okay? That's my cheat um, that I put Nick in. I think I have it here. See? Exactly the same. <laughs> this is the wig she got. I think I got it from AliExpress. Yeah, I, I, I bought three of those and stacked them when I put my brother-in-law in drag. And that was, that was what Amanda Bruegel was wearing. Okay, I think I got most of the black down. I'm just going to add some of that to the brows. In fact, you know what? I'm going to pop into my Jade Thirlwall palette to use the black here. So it's much more intense. Just filling in the outer corners first and blending it in. Yeah, and so there's Drag Race Canada. Drag Race Italia is on too, is on Wild Presents. And I must admit, I haven't been able to get into it. I've been quite busy. And you know, um, yeah, the subtitle game is a little bit challenging for me at the moment. I mean, between Drag Race and Dragula and <laughs> everything else, and then Queen of the Universe coming, and, you know, I have not been able to get into Drag Race Italia, and I haven't really actually felt the need to. I think um, there really is starting to become too much Drag Race, and I have a feeling this is going to be an issue moving forward. But I did watch a couple of local drag shows, okay? Which I will get into after I clean up these brows. All right? <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. I've gone and powdered my forehead, and I'm just going back in with this transition shade again, just to blend this all out. Okay, I'm going to go in the rest of my face now. Last week, I went to watch two drag shows. On Monday, I went to watch a premature commotion, okay, which is my friend Becca the Bus's show. And on um, Friday, I went to watch the Boom Boom Room live at the Marina Bay Sands. Let's start with Premature Commotion, okay? So Becca's been doing this show for years, okay? She basically does um, her riot, okay? She's been doing a Hard Rock Cafe, but since that has kind of shut down, she's been doing her drag shows at um, The Projector, which is a kind of like this indie cinema thing in this old, old building called the Golden Mile Complex. They, they haven't been able to do full houses because everyone has to be spaced out as well. So that's a challenge for Becca. And she usually gets about three drag queens to perform alongside her. They'll, they'll perform 
all month, okay, on Sundays and Mondays, which is a really difficult time for me because I work on Mondays. And Sundays, I usually have family dinner, so it's hard for me to go, but I went to catch them this time. Ariana Conda, who was on my channel for um, Snatcherween, was performing, along with um, El Nina, which is one of the premier drag queens in Singapore, and Sophia Blast. Sophia Blast is a uh, drag queen who makes all her own stuff. It was actually pretty good. I mean, Becca is a great host, okay? Whenever Becca hosts, you just know you're in for a good time, okay? She's irreverent and she's funny and she's um, she makes a lot of political jokes, okay? And, you know, for some reason, they decided to go for a Christmas theme. So it was <laughs> a lot of very Christmassy numbers. Becca prides herself on being shocking, okay? So she had this <laughs> kind of a burlesque thing where she actually took off all her clothes and ran around um, in her underwear. <laughs> And that was a little bit shocking, even for me. I'm, I am a bit of a lady. <laughs> but, you know, I think it was all in really good fun. And I think everyone really enjoyed it, okay? Sometimes Becca's kind of humour and Becca's aesthetic is a kind of like, you're, you're just so shocked about what she's about to do that you, <laughs> you laugh. Sometimes I find myself laughing nervously at what she does, but I think that's her style, okay? The rest of the performers were great, okay? Becca was really professional. I mean, she would introduce every single performer each time, dr drilling in the name of each performer, okay? Compared to someone later, <laughs> who I'm going to talk about later. The performance were really good. I really enjoyed myself. My kimchi white. I'm going to use a brush to blend this out. Okay, Ariana Conda did a lot of pop princess stuff. I mean, she has her Ariana Grande looks and everything, and she was really, really good too. And her lip sync is tight, okay? Okay, El Nina, she's also a very tight lip syncer. She does more classic numbers, and she has amazing, amazing costumes. Very, very um, classy showgirl costumes. In fact, I love her costume so much, I've reached out to her designer, okay? House of Alchemy to make some of my own. So we'll look out for that. I'm going to be making a Christmas outfit soon with House of Alchemy. But I think the highlight of the night was Sophia Blast. Okay, Sophia Blast is a queen here, local queen, who makes all her own outfits. She dances really, really well. And she has a lot of um, gags, okay? She did three numbers. One was Krampus uh, number. And the last one was this number where she basically lip synced to a drunk 12 Days of Christmas. And she got every single new ones down. She was really really amazing okay she i i i'm trying to get her on my channel so watch it watch this space for sophia blast yeah so i think sophia blast is performing throughout december as well so if you're going to if you're going to catch premature commotion i'm going to link, leave a link down below okay i really highly recommend it this is local drag done right okay this is going to set my face really quickly i'll be right back to discuss <laughs> the boom boom room so i've gone in and i've contoured a little bit Okay, now I'm snatching the nose, and now I'm going to go in with the rest of the eyes. Okay, a lot of liner now. I'm going to try to do a very graphic, very um, avant-garde kind of eye, I hope. Okay, so, the Boom Boom Room. I think I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but the Boom Boom Room was a huge institution here in Singapore. Okay, it opened in Bugis Street in 1991, and it was supposed to be modeled after the Boom Boom Room in San Francisco. Apparently, it was a blues club in San Francisco called the Boom Boom Room. In fact, there's a Boom Boom Room almost everywhere in the world. So if you Google Boom Boom Room, there's even one in New York City. Okay, I think that's where Madonna did her that dance recently on the, on the tabletop. There was a Boom Boom Room. It used to be a place where drag queens, transgender people would go to perform. It was world-renowned, okay, until the government kind of shut it down, okay? Lee Kuan Yew at the time decided it was too debaucherous, okay? And so he shut down the, the whole Boogie Street vibe and sanitized the area, a bit like how Giuliani sanitized New York City. It's going to try to use this Maybelline gel liner, okay? And then after that, they moved to um, Far East Square and they continued to have drag shows there. And that's where my friend, Dwayne Tan or Miss Knee, Knee Jerk Reaction, Knee J Reaction. Um, he was a Boom Boom Room singer, okay, for a number of years when he was young. 
So the basic concept is that you have drag shows, you have a drag queen, and then you have a singer who comes out to sing in between while the, while the, while the queens change, okay? And it's kind of like a variety act. So it was really exciting when um, they had Boom 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 live to the Marina Bay Sands. Okay, the Marina Bay Sands is this huge um, casino and hotel in Singapore. And it, and Kuma performs there sometimes. He has his one-man stand-up shows. And um, they decided to do a Boom Room, and I was really excited to, to catch it. Unfortunately, I don't think it translated very well to the big stage, okay? Of course, there's all these COVID re restrictions as well, so it had to be in a big room, okay? Everyone was socially distanced. There were a lot of empty chairs and empty space. The stage was quite big, okay? And it did take a little bit more for the performers to fill the stage. And I don't think they did that successfully in a lot of things because it's so big and sometimes they couldn't have that many people on stage and it looked really, really sparse. And you know, Singaporean audiences are not the most raucous and when you spread them out, the energy is even more um, diffuse, okay? And that really brought the energy of the whole thing down. Okay, setting it black from the farewell palette. Okay, using the black, I'm just going to bring this all the way around. That's the idea. So very, very avant-garde, almost like panda-like. <laughs> and I'm just gonna blend this lightly. Kuma, for people who are not familiar with the Singapore scene, he's a stand-up comic. He cross-dresses while he tells jokes, okay, so people call him a drag queen, but you know, he's not really a drag queen, okay? He He's more of a stand-up comic who wears dresses sometimes, okay? His makeup is quite sparse, okay? And this time, I mean, because of the popular popularity of drag race and everything, they try to shove him into these like drag outfits, which I think he looks completely out of place in. These big neon wigs and big costumes and everything, which looks out of place with his makeup and his personality. So I think, you know, I wish they would style him a little bit more, more, um, in keeping with his persona, okay? And his jokes were, I mean, they're funny, they are really rude, and he uh, prides himself on being very rude too because I think he was really rude to some of his um, uh, fellow performers, okay? They had some Vegas performers over doing like aerial acts and like spinning LED lights and stuff like that, and Kuma would go say things like, oh, um, they're here but they're okay and you'll clap because they are Caucasian or something like that, okay? Which I found really, really in poor taste because, you know, they're your performers and can you, can you imagine if they heard that? I'm pretty sure they heard it. It would be so embarrassing, I think, talking to talking about your performers that way. I think that could, that could be improved on. Um, the performers were all pretty good. It was a mix of new performers, okay? They had um, Venom is Joachim and Tia Sorel and Anastasia, some of the girls from the house of Ms. Joachim performing. They were obviously amazing. They danced high energy pop numbers. And then they had some old queens from the Boom Boom Room days. Okay, Helga and Lisa. Lisa Dolmet. Also looked a little bit out of their element in these, you know, very, very modern kind of drag looks. Okay, yeah. So it was a little bit disjointed. Kuma never introduced any of the performers. Okay, they just came on one after the other. There was a random magic act and also Nat Ho who's a local singer came and sang which you know I think they should have called Dwayne because Dwayne was originally from the Boom Boom Room. It was okay the show was a little bit disjointed and you know energy was quite low so I didn't really enjoy it but I think you know whatever local drag there is I'm happy to watch. And I'm just gonna go in with this eyeliner I'm just gonna darken all these black lines. I'm just gonna clean up this eye and I'll be back to finish my lips. All right, I'm back. Cleaned up the eyes a little bit. So it's starting to look a little bit more severe. And I'm going to go into the lips. The lips, I'm going to do a very neutral kind of lip today, all right? I'm going to line it first with Bel Air, and then I'm going to go in with a really, really light nude. I think the Boom Boom Room really is something that really needs to be in a more intimate space, okay? Being in a big thing like um, Marina Bay Sands is ambitious, but I don't think it's right for it. Okay, yeah, and you know, Singapore drag has a long way to go, okay? I think um, right now, it really is still a lot of pop hits, top 40, house numbers, stuff like that. I, I would like to see a lot of musical theatre and cabaret drag, which is why I performed at the Singathon, okay? Um, I think this video is probably going to come out after the Singathon. I don't think I have time to edit it before then. But um, I'll throw up a link for our performance there. Me, Opera Tang, and Miss Nijay Reaction did a 
a little bit of a cabaret number there, okay? And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you if you still want to donate to the Sing Theatre, who organized the Sing Thon, please go ahead. <laughs> Links all down below. All right, okay, I'm just going to finish up this lip and um, get into my final outfit and I'll be right back. All right, and this is the finished look. Pinstripe gangster lady ready for a film screening. Okay, uh, Kylie's gonna vlog this for me. She's right here. <laughs> and um, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ring that post notifications bell, all right? So you're notified every time I upload a new video. Lots of things coming up. And, and also, don't forget to donate to the Singathon, okay? Um, links all down below, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.